This video is to show you how to run Holt Winters method on data. Uh, I have some sales data here um, for a handful of years and I'm going to run the Holt Winters. Um, I'm going to pick uh, alpha, beta, and gamma of 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.5. Uh, that's just to follow an example I was doing with um, my group here, my class. Um, okay, and here are my initial value equations that I'm going to use. There's different ways to do your initial value, so I'm going to do um, where I use the first year here to get my seasonals. And how I do that, I'm going to um, take each of the actual sales values and compare it to the average um, per quarter for that first year where you lock the averages just like that um, and go down and then I'm going to take my level 5 as my initial level uh, and I'm going to take and divide that by the corresponding seasonal for the previous year quarter 1 here uh, that's that level 5 and then trend 5 I'm going to take the difference between this number and the previous year's um, sales divided by seasonal why am I doing that I'm de-seasonalizing um, the sales if you will by stripping off the seasonal effect so that I can get just to the upward trend uh, and then I'll add in the seasonal effect at the end with my forecasts and actually speaking of which, I'm now able to get my forecast for the next period, this guy. Uh, forecasting, you go and take the previous time steps, um, level and trend, and then re-seasonalize them by timesing them by the corresponding seasonal. So Q2, I'm going to jump back to Q2 of the last year here. Gorgeous. Um, ready to copy those all the way down. I'll do that in a minute. Um, those are all my initial, uh, sorry, these guys right here are all my initial values now. Now I'm ready to actually start up with my formulas, which are right here. Um, let's just bump this up a bit. So notice I have different initial values when I have monthly data, when M is 12, M being the number of periods in the year. Um, let's see here. Good. Let's just bump this aside now. Okay, uh, and so now, next one to start with is this seasonal here. I take gamma, log that, uh, times by the Y divided by the L, so the current Y over the current L, plus 1 minus gamma, so we're taking a weighted average of the current seasonal effect. Um, with the previous seasonal for the corresponding same quarters or quarter one of the last year. That's this whole T minus M business. It bumps you back to the previous year's corresponding seasonal value. Um, so that's the seasonals. We're done with that. Uh, we just need the level and the trend and then we're actually done and we can copy everything down. Beautiful thing doing Holtz in Excel. You only have to do each of the formulas once. So we're going to take alpha now times the YT divided by the corresponding seasonal. So we don't have it for quarter two yet, so we go back to quarter two of the previous year. Again, that's that whole T minus M thing. Um, plus one minus alpha. Again, this is like a weighted average actually. Times the um, previous level plus the previous trend. So weighted average of the previous time steps basically level and trend. Uh, keep going to your beta. Ignore the division by zero for now that I just got. Uh, beta times by your current level minus your previous one. That will give you your upward trend basically. Uh, plus one minus beta. Lock that times your previous trend. So again, it's a weighted average of the current, basically the current trend with the previous one. And then that smooths out over time with this kind of recursive formula, if you will. If you lock everything just right, you only have to do each calculation once here. And then finally, to get your errors, take your actual sales minus your forecasted and pop that the whole way down. And you're almost done. We are going to optimize our alpha, beta, gamma, and we're going to clean up our forecasts at the bottom now. Uh, and let's just move this around a little bit. Bear with me. And then let's go to the very bottom. Now at the bottom, there's a bunch of things that shouldn't be there. 
namely you don't need, um, so looking here, your forecast are in column F. We don't need any of the rest of these guys. They just happen to come down as we, as we um, autofill below. Now, um, you'll notice uh, normally for your forecast, you just take your previous level, your previous trend, add them times by the corresponding seasonal. Um, that works until you run out of levels and trends. So once you run out of data, you can no longer get your levels or your trends or your seasonals. So what you do is you keep using um, the very last level and trend you got. You'll assume, we can safely assume those are the best ones to grab. Uh, now, um, what you're going to want to put in is a K here, where K is the number of time steps ahead you are forecasting. So normally when you're within kind of this table here, you're just jumping one time step ahead. So K is still one here. We're going to add that in H7 times. Um, but as you keep going down, you're going to be jumping more time steps ahead here. So here you've run out of data two time steps ago. So you're going two time steps ahead and that K is two. Um, now, very end value here. If we want to keep going past one year of forecasting, uh, we ran out of seasonals. What you just do is you go and look, okay, I'm in quarter one, go grab the very last quarter one seasonal that I have. So not here, but here go get that seasonal factor and you keep cycling through your seasonals once you run out of seasonals as well and then use this formula here with the K in it to jump K number of time steps ahead. Uh, and now next step is to go and minimize our errors. Um, I'm going to take, there's lots of different error measures you could take. I'm going to use the RMSE, the root mean squared error. And I literally get that by square rooting the sum squared of the errors divided by how many there are to get the mean squared error. So root mean squared error, so 7.34, not bad. We can make it better though. Um, I just picked 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.5, kind of truly at random when I set up this example. And really you can do that. You can even just start with 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, um, and uh, punch those um, values into solver to get our optimal uh, alpha, beta, gamma. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my RMSE here and I'm going to minimize it. I want to minimize my error measure by changing. I'm going to change my alpha, beta, gamma. So again, I went to the data tab. I went into solver. Here I am, minimize the RMSC, and I need constraints. I'm going to go grab alpha, beta, gamma. Again, they need to be less than or equal to one. They are like percentages, if you will. Um, so they all need to be, or probabilities almost, so they all need to be between zero and one. Or they're more like percentages, they're weights, but again, they're all uh, zero to 100%. In decimal form, that's uh, between one and zero, if you will. Okay, now once this is all in, my constraints, my changing variables, minimizing my RMSC, click solve, and then say okay to keeping the solver solution. Good. Okay, so here are my optimal alpha, beta, gamma, and my lowest RMSC is 5.77. Well, how large is that also? Let's take a quick look. If you look at your data here, they're kind of between 100 and now 1,400. That error measure is awesome. So our forecast, you know, somewhere between 400 and 1,400 at the end here um, with an error measure of 5.77. That is very strong. Um, so this is a good method. Uh, one more thing that you can check here, not a bad idea. Once you're done, or even before you um, run the forecasting, you should do this. You should go and look at some scatter plots of your data here. So I'm going to insert the scatter plot, take a look at my data and see if um, um, how I'm doing. So my forecasted sales are in the orange. I just went and highlighted them. I went to insert and inserted a scatter plot here. Um, and if you look at your uh, orange forecast, they lie almost perfectly on your actual sales, which are the blue data. So we did a wonderful job of forecasting our actual sales. One more thing you should always check once you're done. I'm going to go highlight these dates, actually, and I'm just going to grab them until I run out of actual data. And I'm going to go highlight my errors by control highlighting. Uh, 
So I grab the dates, the errors, make sure to highlight the dates first and then control highlight the errors. Whatever you first highlight is going to go on the x-axis. Insert another scatter plot. Here are my errors. Let's see how they're looking. They are really quite good. Uh, what I'm looking for, I want my errors to be evenly scattered above and below zero. I want them to kind of oscillate up and down above and below zero, not too quickly, not too slowly. You can actually do what's called a runs test to check if they're oscillating quick enough. Um, one thing you'll note that the errors at the very start are very large. That is due to my initial values not being perfect. Um, you can actually use Solver and find more optimal initial values if you want but uh, that takes some extra time. And so I ought not to do that because uh, basically what's happening, this is called a smoothing method where your very end values get really accurate and really well refined as you run your method. Um, so I don't care so much that my initial errors are quite large. Also because I'm not looking to forecast things in the past, I'm looking to forecast into the future. Uh, and so I'm doing a really good job of that based on these errors. Their only maximum one here is 20. Uh, as I get more refined, my errors are somewhere around 5 at the highest. That's very strong considering my data is up to 1400 in sales. And that's it for your Holtz Winters method. How to run it and how to test it at the end.